you've been in search for the perfect formula to style, lay, and represent your grooming to a T, search no further. You need to head to the Black Gentleman Grooming Company, where we have everything in stock that will keep you covered from head to toe. It's swagger, it's style, it's class, it's luxury. The Black Gentleman Grooming Company, located at www.theblackgent.com. What up with it? What up with it? Supreme Beast Boxing Talk. This is interviews, though. You know what I'm saying? I am Cadillac Red. I got my homie KG KG here with me. You know what I'm saying? We got a special guest. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, boxer out of Philly coming up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, six and zero. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Three six knockouts. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three knockouts look good out here in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Josh, the real war, you, Joe. You know what I'm saying? I had to yeah. make sure I got it right. I was telling I had to make sure I was going to say it right, man. What's happening with you, though, homie? Nah, nah, I'm cool. How y'all? Yeah, we doing good, man. good, man. Can't call it, man. Can't call it, man. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump off into the interview. Um, I'm going to try to – I know KG going to definitely uh, get in the ring with you and, and learn about some things from you. I'm going to try to try to stay outside if yeah. I can. And we and let the people get to know a little bit more about you and shit. So you from uh you from Philly? What part yeah. of Philly are you from? North Philly. Oh, you North from North Philly. Philly? Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, bet. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about growing up out there in North Philly. Um, I mean, I it it's rough. It's rough, you know. But you just gotta, you just gotta, uh, um. If you you doing something in your life, you gotta learn how to separate things, you know, because it's it's a lot that can um, influence you to want to do the wrong things down here. You know, it is a lot going on. So, you I mean, and you become a product of your environment, you know, of what you're around, and so you have to learn to separate the two, you know, from if you whether you're a working man, whether you boxing, no matter what you're doing. But if you're in the streets, it, I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard. It, it's a lot. It's too much going on, too much beef, too much war, you know. Same as in the other hood, but it's just a lot more. Okay, all right. What uh, For what sure. got you? In, what got you in the boxing? My dad, my dad actually got me in the boxing, like uh, because I was a young kid, you know, growing up, running around with my friends, getting into. I got into a lot of fights, you know, um, staying and hanging on the corner of my friends, fighting everybody. So my dad. He caught me one day fighting, and he was like, oh, you like fighting, huh? Well, I'm going to take you somewhere where they love to fight at, like, you know? And I'm like, huh? I'm thinking, like, what you talking about? Like, they love to fight. They love to fight. I love to fight. You mean? Like, I'm, I'm a little kid. I'm only, what, nine years old? So, I'm, like, I don't care. Like, I just like fighting. Took me to a boxing gym. I sparred my first day in the boxing gym. Kid dropped me. i never forget it. Hit me with a body shot. I fell. Boom. I'm like, Dad. I'm crying. I don't want to box no more, Dad. I don't want to do this. And he like, no, nah, you you like fighting. So, you mean, I, I got you somewhere where you can fight. And, you know, he gave me a task with doing it. He like, um, well, since you don't want to box no more, I give you, if you can beat this kid up, the one that drops you, you can stop boxing. Man, I made that task like it was done. Like, I um, gave me, like, like I say, like two months in the gym, came back and sparred the kid. I did the thing to him. So my dad, like now, you you did you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish. You know I mean uh, you want to stop? I'm like, no, nah, I like boxing now, Dad. Like, I, like I mm-hmm. want to keep going. So he like he he had like a conversation with me where like, but you know, once you start something, you can't finish because we. Like in my family, we ain't no quitters. You know, you know, most people parents tell them like, no quit. Once you start it, you got to keep it going. Mm-hmm. So 
And he like, we going full throttle with it once we start. I, I ain't think about it in that way when because I was young, but I'm like, all right, bet, let's do it. Like, and I've been doing it ever since. I'm 28 now. I've been boxing for 18 years. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of parents say that, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no quit. My mom's, you know what I'm saying, is a little bit different. I yeah. remember I, I struggled, I struggled in basketball, you know what I'm saying? And I was the, the coach had me like at the bottom of the of the roster and shit. Yeah. And I go home, I go home and tell my mom, my mom was like, yo, you should quit. You should quit now. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I'm looking in shock. Like, I'm shocked. Like, what the fuck you mean? I don't, she was like, you should, you should just quit. Cause if you stay, I don't want to hit no bitches. You go yeah. get home. You know what I'm saying? So what you gonna do? Is you quitting yeah. now? You know what I'm saying? So that's what made me like, yo, maybe you're right. I should stick stick it through. You know what I'm saying? I wound up sticking through everything, work yourself out, wind up starting all that good shit. So that shit, when you hear parents say certain things, you be like, damn. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but it, but it, they, they see the long haul. Yeah, my mom was on the same type of time, too. She was like, I mean, because uh, it has its ups and downs, like tournaments mm -hmm. where I was getting robbed out in national tournaments and stuff. I'm coming home crying. It's making me, like, depressed and all that. She telling me that, like, you quit. Quit. You want to come home crying? What you bitching for? Quit. This is something you want to do. Like, I ain't think of it that way. I'm like, man, y'all just, y'all all just mean around here. Like, man, I'm going in my room. Like, <laughs> But as I got older, I see why though. Like she yeah. was saying it. It made, it made me who I am today. Shake me up. Absolutely. Absolutely. KG, you got something for him? Hey, look, uh, regardless of being nine years old, <clears throat> you found out real quick cats in the street don't throw body punches, right? Tell no. Because you got there to that squad <laughs> session. At all. Listen, you know what I'm in the streets. I'm beating them kids up. All, like, <laughs> all like, headshots. All headshots. You know what I'm saying? I get there and you, boom, the wind took right out of me. I'm like, whoa, this is a different ball game. But as your evolution evolution went along, you start seeing the cats out in the, in the street scrapping. And you probably laughed at a lot of them dudes out there scrapping because you'd be like, bro, y'all ain't strategic at all, man. Y'all yeah. ain't this. Y'all got 30 seconds of gas. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And then, and like, they used to try to tell me, like, bro, throw the gloves on somebody. Throw the gloves on. I'd be like, What's nah, because now I'm, I know. And my dad would mm -hmm. tell me, like, man, it ain't no street fighting with this. Like, you know, unless you got to defend yourself, you can't play with it. So I just left it alone. Like, all right, I ain't boxing nobody on the street, man. It ain't even worth it. I know, Dig. Uh, who who was your uh, your first trainer? Was it your dad? Was he showing you the basics? Was he into boxing? Or was or did he just take you to boxing? My dad, he always... Cause my dad was locked up. He was uh, locked up with Bernard Hopkins, and I'm so mm -hmm. he knew he knew the boxing basics. So he he used to take me out in front of the crib and show me stuff. But he took me to a boxing gym, mm -hmm. a Front Street boxing gym. It was a guy named Joe Black in there. That was mm -hmm. my first ever time in a boxing gym. My dad still used to always take me home and show me stuff himself because he, mm -hmm. he knew. But he just wanted the trainer to teach me, like a professional trainer, because at times where he couldn't be in there. Like, he was out mm -hmm. being, making his money and all that, so he couldn't be in there. So I still had a trainer. But when it was later on in the day, I still had my dad. Like, I would go running with him. Like, mm -hmm. he, he would do stuff like that, take me running. He would teach me extra stuff. Him and his homie, he had his homie with him that was locked up with him and shit. So they both okay. were that's what's up. Yeah. So, so you was getting actually there, going to get that work in early, you know what I'm saying, as far as them the actual real body weight exercises. Yeah, push ups, yep. pull ups, burpees. Uh huh. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Run. Yeah. So you was getting Straight that real work. exercises. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that build the body tough. Yeah. Yes. That build the body tough. Yes. Now, yeah. I got one more. I'm going to let you go, Red. Um, um, who, who, who was your dad trying to get you to fight like? You know what I'm saying? Because you know how somebody, either dad is trying to vicariously get you to fight like him, or who, 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 who was dad's vision? Um, my dad, my dad was a big Floyd fan. He okay. liked Floyd, like, but he didn't want me to do the, the shoulder roll with my hands down and all mm -hmm. that. He liked his skill, the skill Floyd had before he like, like when Floyd used to be walking everybody down. Mm -hmm. Pretty boy. Up and stuff, you know I mean? Yeah, pretty boy Floyd. My dad liked the dad version of Floyd. He liked mm -hmm. the, uh, um, uh, 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 uh uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the name that died in the uh, in the motorcycle accident? Diego is that Diego Corrales? 
Yeah. Yeah, Corrales. My dad my dad liked it, him him a lot. Uh my dad liked it. Um uh, who else my dad liked it that he he had me mimicking. He used to he had, used to watch a, a young Canelo when Canelo was young when he was in Mexico fighting and all that. My dad mm -hmm. he studied the game real good. So mm -hmm. I mean, he used to have me watching everybody. Whatever fights came on, I some of them cats I didn't even know, but he used to just have me like stand there just watching them. I mean, just to pick something and take something from them. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now I ask, um, I ask every boxer that uh, that comes through, how was uh, the Rona and the lockdown and all that other shit? How was that? How did that affect you? You know what I'm saying? And how did you get through that? It it, it messed me up, so you know. Like, cause it, it messed me up, but it gave me clarity and more time to sit with my thoughts and think about my future, what I wanted to do, like with my boxing and who I had around me that wasn't for me. And like, I learned a lot through the Corona. So like at first it said in like, I, I think all boxers suffer from like a depression. I mean, when they ain't fighting, when they not fighting at all, once you, once you snap in the reality and you gotta sit down, you gotta face everything. It, it's hard. It get it was hard at first. Like you mean with your emotions going everywhere because you gotta learn. Like you know, boxers, we deal with our emotions in the ring. We go in that ring and we fight it out and all that. Like we train. If we get mad, say you get mad at your girl at home. You go in the gym. You hit that bag. You fuck that bag up. You come home. You back happy. You know. You back cool, but. When you ain't got that, when it's taken away from you, you it, you just sitting there like in your thoughts. So a lot of things came into play. Like, yeah, I just was sitting in my thoughts for a while, sat into my thoughts, got my mind together. It gave me some time to get my mind together to see see what I really wanted to do and, and how far I wanted to take my boxing. You know, I always loved boxing and was taking it seriously and knew I wanted – I wanted to, to be a world champion and all that stuff, but it showed me more like, like, no, this is, this is you. This is all you got like boxing. Like, so you got to stop playing. Like, mm -hmm. so I just, I'll start training as hard as I can. I've been training ever since then. And, um, it, with that, it, it helped me. Like I started going to the gym more. Like I, I be in the gym. I do strength and conditioning every other day. I be in the gym every day. Like I ain't like it's it made me want to step it up more. I mean, because at first, you know, when gyms was closed, I, I ain't had nothing. All I had was running. So I just run every day and do my exercises and shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. House. <laughs> yeah. A yep. lot of shadow boxing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right outside my house. That's, that's all I had. So, mm -hmm. but, but it, 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 it helped me in a great way. I like it. It, it helped educate my mind, strengthen my mind where it needed to be, you know, and it matured me more because I needed it. I, I can really say I needed it because I wouldn't have been able to, 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 to feel like I can take this next step with it. Like, you know, because sometimes we don't we not we don't mature like as, as men, like and, and how I how I think of things. Some people don't be ready for that next step just yet. You know. Mm -hmm. until like because some of us we get that next step and we don't take advantage of it we we get it and we just oh fuck it we treat it like it's nothing and all that and then lose it because you didn't grow into comfort some people get comfortable and dwell on that plateau of being comfortable yeah instead of reaching further you know what i'm saying you gotta get you gotta shake things up because you already know for yourself you're working out in the gym your body stops growing at a certain point right so you, your, yeah. your, your, whoever your strength and condition coach is he shocks your body. He changes the workout yep. up. Yeah. Keeps your body going. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so it, it helped me. It, it helped me a lot, man. Shit. Okay. I, I, I liked it. It, was, it had a lot of negatives with it, but it had mm -hmm. way more. I, I mean, more positive it's balance. than all the negatives. It's called balance. You got to have yep. it. Because yes, if you ain't sir. got balance, bro, I, I think you did if you ain't got balance. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. are you next to it? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, KT, you got something for him? Uh, shit, man. Uh, shit, let's dance around in the fucking ring, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know you up in Philly. 
and there's a lot of Philly fighters up there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever gyms you you got a home gym, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, you got a home gym. Who 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 could you say some notable bodies you've gotten some wreck with? Far sparring. Well, like uh, who sparring in Philly? Yeah, yeah. Who like 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 some notable names that we that we know that's 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 probably out here today. You know what I'm uh, saying? I, I sparred Danny Garcia. Um, okay. Jerron Ennis, Boots. Now, now look, when you sparring these cats, were you sparring them uh, like freelance or were you on, on the sparring team, like getting them ready for fights? Getting them ready for fights. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I always, Boots, he my stable meet, so I always, mm -hmm. like, I'm in the midst of helping him get ready for his fights and stuff, you know. Um mm -hmm. Cause we always we always box we always help each other. Um, mm -hmm. I spar Dynamite Carl Dargan. Mm -hmm. uh, I spar him. I used to help him get ready for fights, so I still spar him. I mean, whenever. Um, who else I help get ready for fights? Uh, shit, I, I didn't have Dan there. I didn't have Dan there. All of, all the Philly. If they from uh, one thirty five up, I didn't help them. So long story less long, you didn't got yeah. quite a bit of experience, especially on the Philly side. Yes, so, sir, so when it comes to Philly fighters, can't nobody put you in there with another Philly fighter. You not dad gonna say, no what? I, I know that. I seen yeah, that before. Yeah, yeah. They so you are fighters. Philly. You know what I'm saying? You you are Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And and you fighting you fighting at Wellsway, right? Or you or or you? Junior Walter. Oh, Junior Walter. Okay, one one forty. One forty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I took a I took a fight at Welterweight. That was my uh my comeback fight for this year. Okay. You know, because during the Corona, I pick I put on a lot of weight too. Yeah. You know, that's, crazy, smart. It is. that's smart. No. See, see, here over here, we be calling fighters fat, and I get on them real good. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're a professional. You know what I'm saying? And if you're gonna be out here and you're gonna be saying that you one forty, then damn it, when you sign the contract for one forty, I expect you to come in at on the scale at one forty. But yeah, it's a man, that say, nah, you know what? I'm not about to put that on myself. Let's do 47. I'm, I'm 140, mm -hmm. 247. Because y'all yep. niggas are calling me fat. You know what I'm saying? Because I know what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's, that's realness right there. You know what I'm saying? I can respect that. And then mm -hmm. people don't know. I'm a lightweight fighter. I fight at 35. No. But I'm just mm -hmm. working my way to see whether or not. Because last time I fought at 35, I felt like I must then bring it down like the correct way. But I felt like shaky. Like my body wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So, like my legs, like I ain't had no legs or nothing when I went into a fight. You thought I had sex. I still won, but I just didn't feel mm -hmm. like myself. Yeah. So, so now, like I'm just working my way back down, but I'm doing it the natural way. Like it's it's more easier for me, like with the environment mm -hmm. and with everything I'm doing now. You know, eating more better and all that. So, we'll see in time if I can make it back down to one thirty five. Okay. Jeez, get, 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 get time some time. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm bringing it down. Like, my next fight is at 140. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't, it, I'm not pushing too hard just to nah. try to bring it down. Uh, uh, uh. But most guys, like Red said, first thing they want to do, okay, I fight at 35. I need to get to 35 that right 35. now. Nah. You're like, nah. Because <laughs> your body, damn. Tough up at. Your body mm -hmm. not going to let you. Like, you, you put on, like, I see it. You put on too much weight because I did. I'm like, damn, I ain't never get this big. I'm down at 65. I'm like, huh? Nah. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I'm going to take my time. <laughs> hey, hey, you know who I love that damn extra weight on? Them little oh. skinny chicks that come out after COVID. That COVID weight damn did them, right? They got yeah. a little heavier nails. Yeah, so yeah, I like that. Yep, but y'all yes, boxers, y'all get that shit around y'all damn neck, and I can see it. I'm like, yep, buddy fat you right like now. Yeah, like yeah, but, but yeah. <laughs> Why ain't nobody tell me? That's what I be saying. Why ain't nobody <laughs> tell me I look like this? That's what <laughs> I'm <don't know. laughs> I start seeing pictures of me and shit next to my homies. Mm -hmm. and these my homies that I used to be bigger than. I mean, I used to be smaller than, way smaller than. I'm looking, I'm standing next to them. I'm like, yo. I'm huge standing next to y'all. They like, nigga, you big, bro. Like, I'm like, yo, y'all niggas wasn't going to tell me that, bro. Like, y'all just going to leave me out here drawing like this. Bro. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you. I, look, I'm from New Orleans, right? I I, yeah. I I stay in Virginia, though. So I go to New Orleans every year. 
and uh for Mardi Gras, I go down there, I gain 10 pounds easy because yeah. all the food. But man, I be taking pictures with the fan. I'll be like, yo, ain't nobody tell me y'all just <laughs> gonna let me be like this. Y'all wrong, man. Yeah, wrong, man. And my mom got a habit of saying, like, uh, yeah, you look good with all that week, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, I look at it, huh? Like, I look good. Oh, yeah, time to hit the gym. Yeah. Time yeah. to hit the gym. Yeah. I got yeah. stuff to do, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let me ask you this one. Give me your uh, best performance in the ring. W w when was that? Tell me, tell me about it. Sparring or fire? Uh, give me. Let's do sparring first. My best performance sparring was uh. I don't know, because I have I be having a lot of great performances to spar. I actually just sparred this this kid. He was like uh like eight and zero at 135. And he was like every time he, he was coming to Philly, he was beating the brakes off of like the Philly fighters and shit. So they bung him down to our gym for sparring. I forgot his name, but when they bung you down there for sparring and shit, he was like he was talking shit in the sparring at the beginning. Talking shit crazy. I dropped him and all that. I beat the brakes off him. It was like a, it was like a, like, I had to let you know, like, bro, like, I ain't, I ain't the one. And his people's asked, like, who him? Like, kept asking, like, who am I? And like, oh, you don't know him? Like, he been around because I had took a break. I took a break from boxing. Like, people don't know I had took a break. Had too much going on. So I had to get myself right. But once they let me, man. I beat the brakes off, and then they ain't come back for sparring and nothing. Every time they come down, and we, it's, it's just like on some cool family stuff now. Like, <laughs> like humble, I had to humble him. Like, you had to sometimes. Yeah, you gotta tighten him up. You know, you know that's uh, how I be surprised. Okay, so tell me about uh, in, in the ring, in professional. Professional. Yeah. Um, I had for this kid. Um, this no, nah, I don't care here, man. They people are men at the end of the day. But I fought this boy. He was uh. Yeah, I came down there one and oh, one and oh, one knockout. I was, I think I was like two and oh, two and oh. Yeah, I was two and oh in my professional career. They uh talking because they was trying to like, these people was trying to like basically trying to line me up or something like telling me, oh, this kid ain't this, he ain't that, telling me like he ain't good or nothing. But in my head, bro, I always go on my fights prepared. Like, if a nigga good or if he ain't, like, you never know what he bringing to that ring. He can upset you and knock your ass out in your career, bro. Like, no matter who he is. So, uh, they talk all that. They basically try to line me up, suck me in, just to get me, like, to take the kid light. Like, so I wouldn't be training. But I train hard and shit. That's all I do. Like, so we get in there. Uh, like, he came out good as shit. Like, I'm like, oh, he nice. <laughs> he gets sparkles all on. Good kid. So we in there, we getting that shit on. I beat it, but I beat the dog shit out of him. I ain't even gonna lie. I had to separate. That's where the separation came in. Like, I, I know where my skill level is, like, compared to a lot of these fighters. Like, a lot of them be good. But, I mean, it, when you can separate, when you can separate yourself from people that's good, like, that's when you know, like, damn, like, you could be great. You can be great with this shit. So I yeah. separate. Like, I started doing little veteran moves, like, um, and uh, 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 like, like moving his knee, like bumping his knee in the inside, and it'll knock him off balance. Little shit like that to frustrate him, get him, take him out of his game plan. Took him out of his game plan. It was over. He went to swing all wild, man. I start dogging him, like break, broke him down, little body shots, everything, man. That's so all better kind of psychological tricks. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Because they say boxing is mental. It's a mental it is, game. Man. Hell you yeah. gotta play chess in there. You know what like saying? chess, so, yeah, for real. So you saying, so you saying, pretty much how your skills uh, surpasses uh, your record, right? Yeah, hell yeah. You you you, you would say that, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like I took a break. I took a mm -hmm. damn three year break on boxing for a while. You mean like like no, no training at all? No training at all. I came back and trained to start training that third year. Like, mm -hmm. you mean, it was just like a, I, I always went running. Like, I'm a runner. I, mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna lie. I go running because that, that's my mental. That's where it keep me cool at. So, mm -hmm. like, I had, like, I was getting out of my deal with the person who I was signed with. 
Then I lost my cousin, my uncle, and my brother all in the same year. Uh, so it was like I needed like a mental break. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I just took some time off, like man, I because I couldn't focus. I couldn't yeah. focus, and then you going in that ring, not being able to focus, you get yourself knocked off. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't trying to be the fighter to get knocked off because of no shit like that. When knowing I'm we've great, seen, we've seen a lot of mental breakdowns in the ring. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. So I just took the time off. Like, I mean, I do better taking this time off. I'll be back. You know, That's and then going through stuff with my son, mom, man, it, it, mm -hmm. it was a lot. A lot. You know what you call that? You know what you call all that, little bro? What? That shit's life, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You can't explain it. Yeah. Like yeah. You can't explain it no different. Like, when people be like, why you take that little, that long break, man? Life setting. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take care of things, man. Hell Nothing yeah. Happened. Hell yeah. But it, that shit is building my character, though. That's what I think mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. your mind got a damn disconnect. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, me, I'm, I'm, I'm a little older. You know what I'm saying? So. I like I like how my mind is more patient now. So like me, I might get out, but I still train and stuff. So some, every some, every every so often or whatever. So if I'm sparring with some cats, yeah, I think I think the older me will beat the shit out of the younger me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. The way your mindset is pretty much already set up, you're already thinking the way I think now. You got that patience, and that three years off might may have got you where you need to be, and get you going going into the future. You know what I'm saying? So let's um let's speak to your uh upcoming damn uh. Uh, fight, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know who your opponent is? Listen, they, uh, I didn't had, I had like five opponents pull out on me for this card. I suppose they had four some guy with, uh, with 16 fights. Mm -hmm. he, he pulled out. I suppose for like some knockout artist guy, like from, I don't know where he was from. I think he was from like Africa somewhere. But he mm -hmm. pulled out. They've been, they been sending me, like, all these, sending my training to these people and shit, but they like, we going to have your opponent by then. I don't never ask about my opponents. I just mm -hmm. see them when we get in the ring because they not going to come how they, like, when people study people, I, I, I don't believe in studying, like, a lot of fights. Like, I can watch to see, like, your favorite punch or something, but I, I'm not going to sit there and study you because you're not going to come and fight me the same way like you fought that last person. And it's not necessarily for you to do. Look, and it's yeah. not necessarily for you to do. Cause like me, I would, but it's not necessarily for you to fight or to do because you got a team for that. Your team, because when you start coming in on Monday, you wonder why you're working on different drills, working on this. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. It's cause they sat over the weekend and studied the shit. Cause that's yeah. what their job is. You can uh -huh. watch it if you want to. You know what I'm saying? If you want to cater to a buddy's ego or something like that. But no, nah, yeah. that's not in your hands for real. You got a team for that. You uh, know what yeah, yeah, real right. That's why I don't. I'd be like, nah, man, I ain't. I'm not doing this, man. <laughs> I see what we get in the ring. Because you'll get too glued in on it and try to be a perfectionist with it. Because you'll be yep. st studying him too hard, looking at what he did and not realizing he ain't going to look the same way he did the last fight. Like, you don't ain't going to look the same way you did your last fight. At all. Uh, uh, let me ask you this. What, what, explain to me your style. What kind of style would you say you had? Boxer puncher. Boxer puncher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like a uh like my favorite fighter, Terrence Crawford. So I try to do a lot of things Terrence Crawford do. You know, try to close the show. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you, you orthodox and and southpaw. Oh, yeah. I'm southpaw, but I can switch to orthodox. Okay. You don't know, I do it a lot in the ring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. Mm -hmm. It, it, it training with boots, I mean, shit. Yeah, and you see how fluid boots do it, <laughs> yeah. does it? You got yeah. to, it's fluid. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you see, you, I, I guess, you know, what I'm saying the future of Philly's fight style, you might that might be it, you know, what I'm saying being able to do both, yes, sir. You know say no mm -hmm. bullshit, no bullshit. Um, let me ask you this one what's the, what's the hardest you've been hit in the ring? <laughs> I've been hit hard as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do I, let's do sparring first, and then let's do in the ring. Uh, by who? Tell me, you say yeah, yeah. I get no, it. Just, no, no, before, but before you say it, okay, okay. So you uh, he knows this then. Okay, I was about to ask yeah. you, does yeah. do they know who it was? <laughs> Between Boots and Danny Garcia, I got hit hard as shit by both of them. Was it the left hand from Danny? Yeah, the left hook. It was the left hook. Yes, it was. 
So, so, so is what, is what everybody said it was at one point in time. It's past what everybody said it was at one point in time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> and boots, like we be in there sparring, we spar. So, I mean, boots get his spurts where he do a lot of punches and then he start walking you down and shit. So, mm. I mean, you gotta be prepared for that. I mean. So it be that it should be crazy, and boot strong, boot strong in both hands. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm fuck you up, bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, and, and in the and in the ring, uh, like I guess since the pros, you you got one of those. Mm -mm. It's all it's all sparring. That, that's yeah. that, a lot of boxes say that, man. A lot of boxes, say, hey, man, in, in the ring, that shit ain't shit, man. It's sparring. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Matter of fact, yeah. my pro debut, I got hit hard. I got hit. Because this is like, you mean, I ain't never fighting the EDM's gloves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my opponent, he hit me like, I think it was like on the top of my head or something. When he, mm -hmm. boom, that shit felt like I got hit with a brick. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> damn, my head was on fire. <laughs> but the end of the day is all on how you respond after that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of dudes they don't know how to weather that shit. Yep, and it'd be like headbutts, like headbutts mm -hmm. or like shit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, look, you know, some of those if you go back and look them, they're not headbutts. They be using their shoulder. Yeah, because uh -huh. I can't like like because because if I'm spawning with a heavyweight, I, it's not their head. That shoulder catch you. You be like, the fuck was yeah, that? Yeah, I do the shit. I do mm -hmm. like little shoulder bumps and shit on the mm -hmm. inside of somebody's chin. I do that mm -hmm. shit. Fast. So you already picking up all the veteran shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now hold hold on to it. You know how you said you you were trained and then go home and pops a dang on how you doing something. Now as a grown man, you you didn't made it your own. That's your hybrid. Yes, sir. You make it your own. Yeah, you make that shit your own. So if you am picking up them uh veteran them uh, little tactics like that, play it to your favor, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, okay. Now I see uh I seen you had a draw on your record. You uh do you, you want to tell us how that happened or, or what, what happened with that? Yeah, I can tell you. It seemed, uh, like, yeah, it seemed I, like it seemed I, like it was a, a swindle I, move. Yeah, break that yeah. down. I I beat boy. It was um, it was a fight like out Pittsburgh. I think it was. You know, he swindled me in. Like, you know, I don't care what East Side, B Side, but they had it like where as though it was for um, uh, like us. I guess because my manager was Cameron Duncan and they was away. So they had me fighting somebody from Turkey. And they had Turkish TV out there, everything. Like, I mean, he had energy drink, people watching, all that shit. Like, all these big sponsors. <laughs> the spotlight was on him. This nigga had the I, whole rollout. <laughs> hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The nigga had Turkish energy drinks. That's what the, that's what I said. I'm like, what the hell? This thing got all these sponsors out here, and it was streaming hey, on Turkey. Hey, like hey. He, they was did, watching. Did you, live. did you try one of the energy drinks though? No, no, no. I ain't you, to did, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't get one of the Turkish energy no, drinks. No, no, no. You agree? Uh, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. What it tastes like cabbage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I should have took the drugs up and threw that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and talk you shit. <laughs> And then, but, but okay, okay. So damn, so so it was set up for him to win. You beat the brakes on him, so they had to make it a draw. Okay. Yeah, look, look the the fight. First off, this how you know they was trying like get over the fight. Weight was at uh, it was supposed to be one thirty seven give a pound, I think it was, or one thirty six. No, one thirty six give a pound. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wind up putting a weight on the joint, like crossing the weight out. And put in, uh, it was like 141 give a pound or some shit, some shit like that. So they basically like boosted the weight up. We look at the jaw and all that. I'm like, oh, like, yo, look at the weight. Look at the weight. And I wound up coming in under. I wound up coming in like 133. The scale was mm -hmm. off. And he wound up coming in like 141 or something. Right? I ain't give a fuck. I'm like, all right. But he went and followed me on Instagram. When a nigga follow me on Instagram, he weaved himself. That shit said mm -hmm. 152. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, all right, so he's trying to intimidate me, basically. Like, mm -hmm. he had his weight and all that. He gained all that weight. I'm still going to fucking him up. Like, I don't, don't care. 
still gonna get your ass with. We came, we uh, we fought, we fight, bro. I was smoking him. I was outclassing him. You know, he was, he was like one of them short, stocky dudes. Like, he did mm-hmm. too. He was trying to like use his muscle around, but I was out boxing. He kept the jab on him. And the one judge had it in my favor for me to win, and the other two judges called it a draw. I was sick as shit. I was sick. I jumped out the ring. I was I was snapping. I snapped that jump. Yeah. Like yeah. I I knew I wanted to fight, bro. They had sparkles when the nigga coming out. All that shit. <laughs> <laughs> they had a whole lineup for the nigga, bro. <laughs> yeah, you try. You about to try to you try to piss on their parade and getting the draw of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That nigga had parties to host afterwards and every damn day. That's what I said. I'm like, they probably great party all that because it was like yeah, a festival yeah. down there. Yeah, like, it, it, it was four rounds. It was four rounds, right? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what round did the crowd get quiet? <laughs> they they was quiet every round. He couldn't do <laughs> shit. After the first round, they went quiet. They was quiet that first round because he could not hit me. He uh, couldn't do nothing. He no. didn't get nothing off. I was cracking the shit out of him the whole fight. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, Mm-mm-mm. I was sick. Like, I'm like, what the hell going on, bro? All right, KG, KG, you got something for him? Um, I actually don't. You know what I'm saying? At the moment. You know what I'm saying? But I yeah. will. You know me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, um, so you said the fight the fight coming up. Where, where, is, your, where is your next fight? Uh, it's in Philadelphia at the 2300 Arena. Okay. Uh, Swanson Street is a place we got called the arena. It's like the new Blue Horizon in Philly. Okay. 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 That's what's up. That's what's up. And uh, now, what do you what do you, what do you fall on that card? You you like, you, you, uh, you headline it or you? I ain't the I ain't the headline. I don't know what I am. Um, <laughs> you just I showing up. Yeah. You, yeah, you coming to fight? Basically. I'm here. For, I'm here to fucking fight. I'm just here to fight. <laughs> I'm just. I can dig it. Okay. So so give me a give me your five year plan. In boxes, where, where, where do you where do you want to be at? Where you gonna be sitting at? Five years from now. Five years from now. Mm-hmm. Shit, I had that green belt. Five years from now, if I got that green belt, I'm a, I'm gonna get it within three years. So okay. five years from now, I'm gonna I'm gonna be retired. Five years from now, I ain't even gonna lie. You don't want the IBF, nigga. Once I get listen, I that's gonna come with it. I already know I'm gonna get the green belt and defend it like twice. I'm retired. Nah, but but you know the IBF, the IBF is the red belt. That's from that's a Philly. Oh, what it, I'm it's, saying, basically, you know what I'm saying. Listen, you know, once you get that, once you get that green belt, you already sit at the top for the other belts. Okay. Or once you get once you get the other belts, you sit at the top for the green belt. No matter what belt you get, you see you rank yeah, yeah. within the top ten for yeah. each of them belts. Yeah, yeah, you able mm-hmm. champions fight champions here. Yeah, so sure. whatever belt I get, I'm gonna once you go for the defense, you're gonna fight another champion. Mm-hmm. Win another belt. Like the mandatory. They might give you a mandatory, you know what I'm saying? Might yeah. give you a, mm-hmm. it's always gonna fall down. So once they do it, I'm gonna defend it a few times. I I'm saying twice just as a what's the name, but it, I probably defend it more than that. You never know. I mean, but I know Shit. eventually I'm a I'm a retire. Oh, shit, big red said five year plan, and yeah. you saying you're looking to be them holding this title in three, three. currently. How, 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 how often? How often do you want to fight? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know how them, you know how them guys, the top tier guys are fighting. What, what, twice a year? Once to twice a year? You got yeah. the younger guys kind of pumping out three to four times a year. But, but you know, all I need is motherfucking six more fights just to damn near be like for niggas just to notice me. I can get six fights. For, I get six fights within a year. You feel me? Mm-hmm. The niggas is because the way they, the way people are fighting now, you can constantly mm-hmm. come back. You knocking them off so easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, man, your chance your chance is gonna come. Yeah, but when it do, you just gotta be ready. Take advantage of it. And, and look, we got a uh, we've interviewed fighters, and we've always called them risky because of you know what I'm saying their style of fighting and you know what I'm saying the, the footage that they have. You on the other hand, you're limited on footage. 
Yeah. So 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 these guys don't really know what they're getting. They don't know if you the party, the, you know what I'm saying? The kid, the cat that's out here, the party boy, or uh, if you or the gym rat, or if you just a damn hype job. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? I limit I limit everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it, though. Yeah. I like that, mm-hmm. man. You gotta keep that element of surprise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody limited access to my life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gotta get get them enough, cl- get them close enough so you can say, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm gotcha, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Um, uh, I asked you about the, the, the your plan. Give me your top five fighters. Your top five. Period. Yeah. Period. Or, or like this in the game now. Nah, you can give them to me. Period. Okay. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Pinel Whitaker. Um, Canelo Alvarez, and Demetrius Andre. Okay. <laughs> you don't like him. <laughs> you know that's who he like. If that's who he like. That's who. No, he no, like. no. Red, 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 don't like boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> look, I ain't got no problem with you. See what he said. He called him Demetrius Andre. Look, man, Josh, man, we be having. I be getting into it with these niggas because I can't call no grown man boo boo. I just can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You know <laughs> Some shit. I got to draw the line somewhere, man. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. But uh, all right, man. Uh, uh w- w- you got anything else, KG? You got something else? No, man. I think them. Um, I wanted them pick them little bros' brain after we then gonna see this fight. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If we yeah. can catch catch a catch a stream of it anywhere, or you know what I'm saying where the link is, or yes, who the promoters sir. is. Yeah, so we can catch that. We 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 love to have you back, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely have you come back, man. Definitely get you to come back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh and uh, come visit us again. You know what I'm saying? After the fight, you can tell us how everything went. You know, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? And look, man, I'm going to be real with you. I'm glad I got through the whole interview, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a beef with Philly fighters for a little minute, you know what I'm saying? Because the nigga J-Rock beat my favorite fighter, Garrett Hurd, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. In D.C., he came there, swiped it up, and I had to deal with Philly niggas all in my face saying, yeah, what about that? <laughs> what about hey, that? Yo, I was there. I oh, was man. <laughs> we damn near wasn't going to be able to leave the stadium how bad he was, bro. Yeah, yeah. See, see that, shit? that shit made me mad. You know I knew something was wrong when the Redskins band came out. I was like, oh, shit. That's, yeah. You play a loser. That's the loser song, man. What you doing, man? <laughs> you doing? Get out of here, man. Get these. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, though, man, uh, uh, good shit, man. Um, you want to tell the people how they can follow you? Before we get out yeah, you can follow me on... Uh, Instagram at Josh the Boxer, Facebook Josh the Boxer, Twitter everything with is Josh the Boxer with the D A like it's spelled in here. Um, okay. And and I got an upcoming workout brand, uh, Real War Fit. You know, uh, I'm trying to get to it. There you, you know. go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So follow me. You know, you will see everything on my page. All right. All right. You know what I'm saying. That's that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh KG, you got something before we get out of here? Man, I want to thank the um, uh, my boy Josh Dam Jones for pulling up on us. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You, 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 you want you want no stick up there as them uh interview. You, you know what I'm saying? You saw what it was when what it is, you know what I'm saying? You're more than welcome to come back, little bro. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. We wish the, I appreciate we, y'all. We, we wish the best wish the best wish the best for you moving forward, you know what I'm saying, in this thing we call boxing. You know what I'm saying? I'll um, be back, bro. And, yeah. to, and to everybody that's listening, you know what I'm saying? That's how you know who the fuck I am, you know what I'm saying? But the boys, you know what I'm saying? My fellas, you know what I'm saying? The usual suspects still call me KG. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, man, it, it's been a good one, man. Uh, salute Josh, man, coming through definitely, you know what I'm saying? Uh, good luck on your next fight, you know what I'm saying? I hope to hear nothing but good things. And, uh, yeah, man, like I said, we, we definitely going to have you back, you know what I'm saying? Chop it up, up with us again and shit. On that note, man, salute, uh, salute to the chat. Salute to the mighty LDBC. You know what I'm saying? It's Supreme Beast Box of Talk. It's your boy Cadillac Red. And I'll holler at y'all in a minute, man.
one.